So you're at, working as an ASME organizer 1984 to 1989. What else is going on in your personal life? Where are you living? Um, what are you, and, uh, I was, was living here. Um, I met Sue in 81 or 82, and um, I moved in with her. So um, uh, that's, you know, at that, at that time, that's where I was living. Um, uh, what else is going on with my personal life? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, I never had a personal life. I don't know. <laughs> how about this? Um, tell me a little bit more about meeting Sue, how you guys met, how you guys got involved, how that romance developed, and okay. what your relationship was like. <laughs> <laughs> Did I have a personal life in 85? <laughs> Uh, well, I met Sue, um, for the first time, um, at an Old West End Festival, which is in June, and, uh, I had a literature table out there for the Coalition for Safe Energy, and, uh, you know, people came by and tried to engage them and get some literature, sell them a button, whatever, and this, what I, uh, assumed to be a very good-looking blonde approached the table, but it was kind of hard to tell because she had her head down like that, and she wanted to buy a button. So I handed her a button, and she handed me a dollar, and, and that was about it. <laughs> but uh, I, I saw enough of her to recognize her a week or two later when I was at a party at uh, Amjad Dumani's house on Robinwood, and. Uh, uh, we used to call it the chicken house because he had a rooster, a plastic rooster strapped onto the fence. Um, and I was at a party there, and who do I run into but Sue? So we sat and talked for, I don't know, a couple of hours, and um, I thought, boy, this, this person's pretty cool, you know? And uh, I just made a point of keeping in touch with her. Do you think, aside from her being an attractive blonde? She had a nice car. <laughs> She had a house. She had a house, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all the things I never had. <laughs> um, well, she, it, was, it was obvious she, she really cared. Um, I, uh, I, I called, she remembers this more than I do, but I, I called her on the phone once here, um, and she purchased some raffle tickets for, from the Coalition for Safe Energy. And, um, and it's just, she started coming to meetings. And uh, we, we, we got to be friends and really enjoyed each other's company. And we had a rally at, uh, against Davis Bessie, another one in 81. And uh, we, the Coalition for Safe Energy was having a planning meeting, and that was one of the first meetings that Sue came to. And we were, we were looking down the list of speakers, and, and we had mostly men. And I said, Sue, we got to you know, we got to get more women on the program here. How'd you like to MC it? And she said, yeah. And I thought, oh, great. You know, she'd be a, a good MC. Well, she did it. She tells me later because she didn't want to disappoint me. But um, even though her legs were shaking when she was, <laughs> was uh, MCing the rally, she did a great job. And she's just been gung-ho ever since. I mean, every demonstration I've either organized or participated in. Uh, she'll make banners, she'll come to it, she'll try to get people to come to it. I, you know, I support, you know, all the stuff that she's done with now and uh, different issues that she's been involved in. So it's been a real mutually supportive, uh, very interesting relationship. Uh, so that's going on 40 years now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, next year will be 40 years. Yeah. So what would you consider her three best attributes? Her blonde hair, her nice car, and her house. You named them earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I'll be quite honest. The, the first thing that attracted me was her looks. Um, but it, very quickly, I found out what a good sense of humor she had, and uh, that her concern and her caring about the issues that I was involved in wasn't just because uh, she wanted to be friends with me. 
uh, she was genuinely interested. In fact, in 1976, when I was getting s uh, signatures on the utility reform issues, she was getting signatures uh, on a statewide issue to ban leg hold traps. And uh, she said that kind of ruined her on doing that because she got rejected by so many people that were pro-trapping. Uh, but when she told me that, I thought, well, by God, you know, here's somebody who really puts her money where her mouth is. You know, she's concerned about this and she's out there on the street getting signatures. So, you know, that it was impressive. So you were kindred spirits in terms of your commitment and your concern yes. about social justice? Absolutely. Yeah. Kindred spirits all down the line. Yeah. And uh, our first date uh, was at the uh, Toledo Airport. Um, it was the year that Reagan fired all the air controllers. And in fact, they got a picture around here somewhere of us out there at the airport. Uh, the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization, PATCO. And uh, labor unions in town uh, did a picket line for PATCO. And uh, I said, hey, you want to go to this picket line? And he said, yeah. So we went out. That was our first our first out-of-town date was at Solidarity Day in Washington on Labor Day in 81. And um, uh, we went to Washington on the, on the bus and uh, missed our bus coming back and had to grab a bus that I saw some AFSCME signs on it that was going to Minneapolis. And I said, ah, they got to go through Toledo. So <laughs> they let us ride with them on the way back. So you started dating Sue in 81? 80, 81, yeah. And so she's with you pretty much throughout the rest of your, your travails, correct? Yeah. You guys have had a pretty solid, there were no breaks, no big... Uh, you know. She hadn't kicked me out yet. Yet. There's still time. <laughs> it's still plenty of time. 